All right, so now we're on combustion. Now, combustion gets a bit complex to understand, and I don't want to leave you with a misunderstanding. We're going to take and classify combustion in a very simple and narrow way. When you get into college, you may be required, or in a class that follows this one, you may be required to think of combustion in broader terms. But for right now, we're going to consider combustion in a very simple way. Let me give you the broad uh, thing first. Anytime you combine something with oxygen or react something with oxygen that produces light and heat, among other products, you can combine oxygen or react oxygen with something that produces light and heat along with the other physical products, um, that's combustion. But for us in this class, we're going to narrow that down to a specific kind of combustion. In this class, we're going... Combustion will always be a combination actually it should be hydrocarbon not hydrogen combine a hydrocarbon I'm making a big mess with this stuff today Yeah, it's going to be one day. One day when I get through it, it's going to be hydrocarbon. Well, okay, I don't have all day. You don't think so? Okay. Well, we're not going to wait the rest of last period. Sorry. Okay, so combine a hydrocarbon with atmospheric oxygen. atmospheric oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Actually it's going to be steam because it'll be a gas, but that's type of type of water, it's just a gas is water, um, along with light and heat. <clears throat> now at this point in time we will not be writing light and heat in the product side of the equation okay later on we'll be doing some equations and um, thermochemistry stuff where you have to do that For right now we're not going to do that along with light and heat All right, so any kind of hydrocarbon. Now, in the previous two types or classifications, I gave you this simple A, B form, okay? It's not so easy to do with combustion because with combustion, you can have any kind of hydrocarbon. And hydrocarbon is a combination of some number of hydrogens, I mean, some number of carbons and some number of hydrogens. So X and Y subscripts because it could be any number of those. Okay, what we don't know will be the physical state because it could be solid, liquid, or gas to start with. We don't know the physical state. We're going to put that together with atmospheric oxygen, which is always going to be a gas. We're always going to produce carbon dioxide, gas, and we're always going to produce steam or water that's in gaseous form. We do not know any of the coefficients. Here. So the general form is a little bit more complex. <clears throat> but we always will use a hydrocarbon fuel. Okay? We learned the name hydrocarbons in the last unit. So you should be able to recognize a hydrocarbon when you see one. Okay? Well, let's give you an example. Let's balance one real quick and give you an example of 
a hydrocarbon reacting with atmospheric oxygen. Here's methane, the simplest of hydrocarbons. Combining it with atmospheric oxygen, we're producing CO2 and we're producing steam. Water in the form of gas or steam. <coughs> Four. And to balance this, we're going to put a two here and a two here. All of these are gases. So then we've got to get to single displacement. And we say that that's sometimes also called single replacement. Or simply displacement sometimes. A single displacement reaction, a more active element that is alone. Displaces. a less active element in a compound. It's alone and it displaces a less active element in a compound. Do you remember determining volume of an irregularly shaped object using displacement? When you're in physical science? Nobody remembers that? You remember that? You determine the volume of an irregularly shaped object using displacement. Maybe. Well, the way you do that if you want to the volume of a rock, you have a graduated cylinder, you put some water in it, you measure the volume of the water, you put the rock inside, measure the volume of the water again, and subtract to find the volume of the rock. That's called displacement. Okay? What it means is, it is making the water move out of the way for the rock. That's what displacement is. Okay? Displacement means you make something move out of the way. You displace it. You take it and move it from its original place. Okay? Well, displacement in a chemical reaction means kind of the same thing. We're taking an element, removing it, and putting something in its place. Okay? So our general form can take, well, I think of it as one sort of form, but a lot of students are confused by that, so I try to show it as two different, basically two different general kind of equations. I think of them as, as the same thing, but let's give it to you in both ways. We have a single element by itself. Now, it might be an element that has um, more than one atom. So, like, hydrogen comes in the form of H2. Well, that's still elemental hydrogen, okay? And we're going to put it together with a compound. And so this element that's by itself is going to displace some part of this compound. 
and it might come out to be AC with B ending up by itself. Or A instead of replacing B might replace C. So you end up then with B A and have C by itself. Some examples then. This is probably the classic example. Solid zinc, that's a metal, and you react it with hydrochloric acid. Mm -hmm. And zinc displaces the hydrogen, kicks it out of there. No. Well, we'll get to that. We have a way of figuring that out, and we'll get to that, okay? And a balance the equation of two here. So just looking at this in terms of these general equations, this is our A part, this is our B and C part, and the A displaces B, so B is out here by itself, and A joins up with C. <coughs> okay, and then if we do Another example that looks at this sort of the second form of the equation here, we could do this. Chlorine gas and an aqueous compound of sodium bromide we're going to produce then sodium chloride dissolved in water, aqueous and we'll produce liquid bromine. To balance it, we need a couple of coefficients here. So this equation looks like this second generalized equation. We have A, B, C, but instead of A replacing B, A is going to replace C, or displace, I'm sorry, yeah, it's going to replace, displace the BR over here. A, A is going to replace, replace or displace C. And so we end up with BA. And then C is by itself.